Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak to you. I'm an infectious diseases physician, and uh, my specialty is by far the most interesting specialty. <laughs> and I will describe the sorts of things I've done in the last couple of years, and you will see why this is so. So I do a number of different things during my week, and the nice thing about infectious disease is it touches upon every single specialty represented here, in fact, virtually every specialty in clinical medicine. So uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, I do an ICU ward round with the intensivists at the Alfred Hospital where I work, also work at Monash, and I'm the liaison to infectious diseases doctors with our ICU. So that means I go up there, I bring up all the micro results from that day, which aren't on the computer yet. I actually go to three of the, to the three teams that actually look after the intensive care. We sit down often over coffee. We discuss every single case in the ICU. So that's 45 cases that we discuss on a daily basis. And there's to and fro discussion, as it should be, between physicians and surgeons and anaesthetists in this case often. Um, and we discuss best management, we often discuss things that have nothing to do with infectious diseases, but the general image of the patient. And it's a fantastic relationship. It's so good, in fact, that I'm viewed very much as a part of their team. So I'm actually regarded by them as part of the intensive care team. I'm on their letterhead. I'm the only outside physician that's invited to their end of year Christmas party. <laughs> It's usually at a nice restaurant, so it's worth going. Um, but very much, it's a collaboration that we've built up over 10 years, very much seen as part of the team, which is exactly how it should be between physicians and surgeons. And it works best when you can actually work together and actually talk. And in fact, so much so that one of the attentivists once said to me, I said, because they were actually really busy, we were interrupting them in the middle of the day, and I said, look, I'm sorry if we were interrupting your day. And he said, no, Alex, when you turn up, this is the closest work ever gets to fun, the discussion that we have with you. And they actually really appreciate it. They really appreciate it because by doing it collaboratively, we actually take some of the stress out of their lives. And they realise that by discussing the cases, we can make some minor adjustments, we can discuss extra tests we might do, or an alternative, or we can just affirm that they're doing the right thing. And that takes some of the stress away from their incredibly complex lives. Um, I also do the same job for about the last three or four years for the burns unit at the Alfred Hospital. So again, this is something where I work intimately with the surgical team there. Fantastic surgeons in the burns unit. As any of you who get the opportunity to spend some time with the burns unit at the Alfred Hospital, it's a world-class unit without compare. Um, and I actually, again, meet up with that team three times a week. We actually discuss things. We often discuss things over a cup of coffee. I, I joke that half of my week is actually spent in the cafe discussing things with surgical teams or with anaesthetists, sharing a coffee, sharing a bag or something like that. It's a fantastic office to do your work in. Um, and I actually only see their patients relatively infrequently because there's actually no need. We actually discuss problems at such an early stage that we preempt any problems arising. We don't get massive complications arising as a result of that. And it's a fantastic collaborative service. I also work at Monash. We treat HIV there. I've been lucky enough to see the HIV epidemic arise. So I was a medical student in these lecture theatres here at Monash before HIV came along. I remember my first lecture on HIV was a paragraph at the end of the lecture on immunology. And the person who actually gave us that lecture then subsequently died under my care at Fairfield Hospital sometime later. Um, I've watched that epidemic grow. I've watched it, I actually worked at Fairfield Hospital, which is the old infectious diseases hospital. And it was hard for infectious disease physicians which had a 100% cure rate almost before that, and the HIV came along and everyone died. And we've turned that to a completely treatable disease now, and hopefully within the next 10 years, actually a durable condition as well. Um, but certainly life expectancy for people on treatment with HIV is now um, normal, basically the same as for the general population. So I do HIV medicine, also do travel medicine as well, and travel medicine is a particular interest of mine. I actually run a, tra a privatised travel clinic at Monash Medical Centre. It's open for students, anyone who's travelling. We've had a number of students going on electives come and see us in the clinic. It's a fantastic opportunity just because the clinic's great fun. It also allows me to travel and I actually pursue some of that interest outside of, um, outside of medicine. So I actually have been tour doctor for a very upmarket tour company in Australia where I actually take some geriatric Australians and we go, on, we go on a private plane and travel across Africa in private jets. And we've been uh, up to the North Pole, we've circumnavigated um, Svalbard. So I've actually had the experience of sitting in a jacuzzi on a luxury yacht while um, sitting in French champagne watching icebergs and polar bears go by. Um, so that's the sort of thing that infectious diseases can uh, lead to. Uh, there are some not quite so positive things. Um, I've also dealt with infection control, I've done a PhD in epidemiology, so I've been involved with some um, epidemiological studies and stuff, so it's just incredibly varied. Um, in terms of why I chose this, actually one of the things I think most of the people here would agree
agree with is, is you don't actually choose your specialty. <laughs> This is a kind of ha another house type question, and it, what is the most bizarre infectious disease you have ever diagnosed, Alex? The most bizarre infectious disease? Um, but you see, know, I don't regard them as particularly bizarre, so we regularly see things like how severe, how from malaria, we see, um, uh, you know, botulism, we see, um, uh, you know, uh, Think of something that's actually bizarre, but um, give a word. <laughs> no, mathematics, some of this stuff, stuff that I can't even spell that we've diagnosed. Um, but they don't seem particularly rare or exotic to me. They seem like just day, you know, infectious disease is so varied on a day-to-day -day basis that all that stuff just seems normal. Okay. <laughs> and I will ask the surgeons to challenge Alex with a, their own question. Why do uh, surgeons dislike ID physicians so much? <laughs> um, actually, it is true that some surgeons, and we are actually currently at war with at least three surgical units at my HIV. Um, uh, to answer that seriously, though, as they don't. So, in fact, in medical medicine, you have, to, you have to build up the relationship so there's mutual trust, and that process takes a long time. To occur. So, for example, at the Alfred, where I've worked with the intensive care or with the Burns unit specifically for a number of years, I'm actually part of a team. And if I give advice, it's generally listened to. If people disagree with my advice, we'll have a discussion around that. So, it's all about communication. You'll realise in clinical medicine, most of the major disasters are around a lack of communication. And if there's a problem, it can almost always be solved by directly communicating with the other person who's in control at the other end. So, lack of communication, and that's often leads to lack of time on both parties and stuff, leads to problems. Having said that, there are a few cases of some of our surgical colleagues who are clearly psychopathic. <laughs> um, so, but in most cases, you can deal very quickly. If you just communicate, if there's a problem or perceived problem, it's often this Chinese whispers thing where, you know, the consultant on our side has communicated the registrar, they've told the resident, the resident spoke to the resident on the other team, the resident spoke to the registrar, they've gone to the consultant, and by the time it gets there, the message is completely confused, and you actually don't have all the data. So you actually have to bypass that system if there's a problem, speak to the consultant directly, ask them why they'd like to do something different, and almost always that problem can be solved. Right, well, psychopathic, we're beginning to heat up a little bit. <laughs> okay, finally we're going to ask for...